KKHT wants you to meet the classiest guys in real estate. This is Tim O'Neill, the icon of insurance. I'm Chris Kelso, the maestro of mortgage. And I am Rob Cook, the godfather of real estate. And together we are... The Real Real Estate Estate Rat Pack. Pack. Much like us, real estate in the greater Houston area is hot. So whether you're buying, selling, owning, or insuring real estate in the greater Houston area, you need to check us out as we are the preeminent source for everything you need to know. And now, they're here to take your calls and answer your questions live. Call now, 1-800-808-5548. The Real Estate Rat Pack. Good morning, Houston. Man, we are having better. We are getting better, absolutely, at it right there. Man, what a gorgeous day today. You know, gorgeous day. And I want to give a big shout-out to somebody who made my little boy's week this week. Let me tell you. A big shout-out to Patrick Sexton over at Legacy Ford, home of the lifetime warranty. Let me tell you. You know, my car, I got rear-ended, as you know, a couple weeks ago. And uh, they they did a phenomenal job on repairing it, by the way. You would not even believe it happened. But um, but more importantly is Patrick allowed us to drive... Yeah. In my in, in my son's eyes, a monster truck, a Ford F-150 with a lift and big tires, and it was the uh, King Ranch edition, the Taj Mahal of trucks, let me tell you. And I, I got addicted to it, I'm not going to lie there, but uh, made my son's week, let me tell you that. It, well, it made your week, too, because I heard about that little incident you had that, uh, you know, not being used to how tall that truck is yes i lifted up four inches that you made them step out in front of the whole school and, and fell flat, flat on, on my flat face. Your face so i thought i was uh i yes. missed that i'm yes, sorry you missed that would have been a great youtube uh, so so thank you for both patrick thank you for making my son's day and week and thank you for making me fall out of the truck uh, i wasn't used to it but <laughs> let me tell you great individuals over there great crew great 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 team and uh, and they've got any Ford you want to buy. Let me so tell is you. Andrew talking to you now that the big truck's gone? Yes, he is talking to me now okay, because, you know, we got back into my Edge, which, you know, also the Edge is, uh, has, you know, the twin turbo, you know, uh, six power, and, and we're flying around the city on that one now. This is the Legacy Ford Show yeah. brought to you by <laughs> Will Ben Mortgage. <laughs> that is correct. We'll build him later, won't okay, we? We will build him later. Yeah. <laughs> as long as this is the happy talk segment, I have some happy talk. Go for it. Well. Guess who scored row A tickets for the upcoming season at the Hobby Center? Tim O'Neill. Tim O'Neill. Yeah, Yeah. but I was on the waiting list to get the email to make sure I knew exactly when those tickets went on sale. And in the last couple times, because I I enjoy going. We've always talked about, oh, we're going to go to New York and we're going to see the shows. Right. But we never go to New York and we never see the show. And so <laughs> it just never, ever happens. So this is like, you know what? We're going to take advantage of what we have here in Houston and the touring companies that come through at the Hobby Center are very good productions and all that. We're going to see the shows. So now we start, we buy our tickets and who's sitting in front of me? You know, Andre the Giant. I can't see. And every time he goes left, I have to go right. He goes right. I have to go left. I can't see. It's driving me crazy. So I said, you know what? I'm getting some row A tickets this time. So I called up and they're like, well, I don't think there's going to be any available. And let's check. Sure enough, so got what you're to saying. row A. You know who's going to sit in front of Tim O'Neill this year? Nobody. 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 That is That's my awesome. happy talk. <laughs> so remember your Rat Pack pals when you want to you know, give up one of those tickets. Yes. <laughs> oh, sure. So, but, we could, but we can't invoice you. I think they're a nonprofit over there. But yes. the, really, shout out to yeah. the Hobby Center, and I love the production values. We saw a fan. We all saw a Phantom. Different, different that is performances. True. But I, I, we saw... Didn't you agree? That I mean that was really the you know absolutely you know was... me me having to have gone to New York and seen everything. Let me tell you the arts that we have here in Houston and the performances and the venues that we have are severely I think underrated. They are as compared to a lot of other places. We have an absolutely excellent venue. We have some great productions that they bring to town. It's a lot of fun. You can make it a really good night. Excellent restaurants to go to both before and after. I mean, it's absolutely an incredible. Well, you experience. know, Jacqueline Hyde started here with Linda Edder. Really, and then went to New York. Okay, so you know we we're 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 cool. We are cool. Yeah, another reason to move to Houston. (laughs) State of the arts, and we have somebody in the studio who's going to tell people why they should move to Houston. You know, we have a great group, and I'm going to mention this of guys in the studio today. Today's Guys Day. (laughs) 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 Well, we do have we do have our our lovely producer, yeah, lovely Nikki. Uh, But we do have a, a great group in the studio today. We've got. Both Danny Garcia and we've got Mr. Rick Rains. We're going to start off with Danny so far. Yeah, he's got, you know, we had a great show before the show. That is correct. <laughs> so I want to talk so about So we're going to have a great show stuff. in the show. 
So anyway, so Danny, welcome back to the show. Hey, thanks for having me back again. So you're officially a two timer now. You're a two timer now. Yeah, two timer. Wow, yeah. awesome. And I think I went MIA for one of them. <laughs> so we were talking a lot about uh, some of the things that you're doing, but let's talk about what people are talking about a lot, which is the market. And I'm getting okay. uh, d- getting different feedback from people. And uh, I think the low-hanging fruit is probably gone, but there is still a lot of business out there. Oh, yeah. What, what are you seeing in your marketplace? Well, you know, um, right after July of last year, you know, we kind of seen a dip on the market. Uh, you know, people stopped competing for properties, submitting high offers, and it's kind of staggered along for a little while. But so I kind of started getting worried there. And, okay, you know, I got to start stepping up my game. And then come around November, December, you start seeing a little bit of pickup of interest to people wanting to buy. And this month just blew up. I mean, a lot of people are like, hey, it's still a good time to buy, right, Dan? I'm like, yeah. I said, well, still seeing things going up in price and no inventory. So, um, man, this year started off to a bang, honestly. I mean, uh, we, we got a lot of people out there that want to buy. Uh, if you're looking to sell, it's a great time. I mean, there's still very low inventory, you know. There's a lot of buyers out there. And it's just a great time in Houston overall. I mean, uh, you're going to hear on national media that the market's going down. I mean, Houston's just very exceptional. I mean, we, we, yeah. we got a lot of job creation. We've had the, the, the most job growth last year uh, ever. And uh, we continue to see, see it in Houston as we drive around. You know, there's growth. I mean, there's land acquisition everywhere. Companies coming up. Apartments going up. Uh, I've had family come in from Colorado, and they're like, hey, man, what's going on down here? I'm like, what are you talking about? I said, there's concrete everywhere. <laughs> and I, yeah, we're a concrete city now. We used to be called AC City. And and, he, and they're just kind of blown away. And, I, and they say, you know, you compare it to our market in, in Colorado, they're like, man, you know, yeah. it's, it's people, crazy. People you, real surprised. And, and, you know, I, shocked. I, 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 I tell people we're moving into a normal market. We were in a, in a hyper market before. Correct. Which, and so we moved into what I would consider more of a normal market, average time on the, on the market now it's about 70 days but you get into some price range and stuff they're gonna be a lot well, longer that 700 and up is gonna well gonna yeah take a it, hit. it goes back it depends on location i mean I, the, I have a couple of listings that went you know off the market in one day you know multiple offers and then yeah they have some of the ones that are still a little bit longer so going back i mean houston it's not just in a nutshell it's i mean it varies you can go down a block and the market staggering and go around the corner and it's booming yeah, and we talk about, the, we call it the micro market. Exactly. You know, the markets are local, but they really are local, local. They're exactly. micro because you can go to, the, and we're going to talk about the woodlands in a little bit. Uh, you know, that's going to be one market, and you, you work <laughs> Cypress quite a bit. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, Rick no. Rains with the uh, Rockstar no, I'm inside team. The Eastern, yeah, no, yeah, we do. No, Woodlands is booming. I mean, we've been out there multiple times, and a lot of foreign investors out there, too, yeah. yeah. You, you know, one of the things I had a big conversation with yesterday with another individual you know, uh, Jim Gaines obviously had that you know, the 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 presentation. That I think we've all yeah. listened to very good stuff mm-hmm. right there. Uh, he's with the Texas A and M Real Estate Center. So that is correct. He's, yeah, there. exactly. He's with the Real Estate Economist. Center right there. And, and I was and, and so a- after I was listening to a presentation from him, I had a conversation in regards to one of the things that we that we're going to start seeing right now is whenever we were in that hyper market in mm-hmm. two thousand and thirteen and fourteen, fifteen, a little bit right there. We had a lot of people that stayed on the sideline. And yeah. so what we didn't contemplate is how many people are coming back now that's normalizing. Exactly. Because there was a lot of people I know that, that sit there and said, you know what? I'm just staying away. I'm, I'm tired of missing out on multiple bids. I'm tired of everything going up on me. I don't think, you know, it's worth it right there. And now they're coming back. Yeah. And it, it, it happened a lot. And I think a lot of people did probably pay very inflated prices because they had to have something. And, of course, and I think the, uh, you know, oil business has gone down a little bit. Thank God it's number four. Five business in Houston is no exactly. longer the the leading industry. Right. Um, yeah, and, well, when you can borrow at three percent, people. But yeah, but you can it. borrow at three percent, and, <laughs> yeah. you, can, and you, can get, yeah. you can you can get six percent on your investments. Mm. You know, it doesn't make any sense to, to pay cash. But we do have you were talking about but, earlier. But you know, we have a lot of people paying cash. Yeah, that they are. I mean, the, the, the problem is this: what I'm seeing with a lot of people is talking about oil and gas, oil and gas. I mean, you know, hospitality. I mean, has gone up. I mean, it, we're a job creator. I mean, we were in a, a Ted Jones uh, uh, forecast, mm-hmm. and he talked about. Yep. Zero net loss jobs in Houston. You're like, what? And I go, you know what? He's right. I said, for every person I hear that got, you know, let go, I mean, I'm getting we, two, three we people had two, moving. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I mean, you know, and and, and I'm starting to see that talk over and over. We're yeah. we're, re- we're really not driven by oil and gas anymore. You know, I mean, uh, the Port of Houston's booming. I mean, I've gone as far as Freeport to sell properties. Yeah, Port of Houston's know? always been one of that little quiet giant out there that people right. don't talk about. And, when the National News talks about it, they always think of it as an oil town. So when the oil goes down, they make assumptions, and they actually <laughs> report 
news based on those assumptions, and it's just not a reality. Well, yeah. Ted Jones even talked about, and you know about this, about all the new plants they're building yeah. along the coast right here because Correct. of what we're doing in regards to natural gas. Exactly. You know, we're going to be one of the largest plastic exporters exactly. within the next, what, 20 years, he said? Well, and see, that's the thing. People always think gas, they think what you put in your car. They don't realize, you know, oil and gas, also you got plastics, you got a lot of you know, things that are being created with it. So when you take that, I mean, there's still a high demand on it. You know, it's just not the one you're putting in your car. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, and that's a very good point because most people just think of, you know, hey, the price in the gasoline is going down. But yeah. there's a lot of other derivatives off there that drives things. Exactly. Yep. No, and, and it is. I mean, I was still, uh, you know, I, I tell agents and everybody, you know, you, you really got to look at Houston because uh, it's a good time to buy. Going back, you're borrowing at an all-time low. You know, you're basically renting your money at a very minimal fee. Uh, you know, this is the time when people actually start buying more properties. I mean, we, we work on the investment side. We've seen people buying properties left and right, you know. And uh, the other thing also, we're talking about, you know, people here in Houston, uh, everybody here just hasn't seen the growth and, and the increase in prices. So we still think everything's overpriced when foreign people or people from other states come in, they're like, that's very inexpensive. Yeah, it's, still, a, it's still a bargain in here. Yeah, I mean, I had a scenario with a family where the, the, the you know the kids had lived here for two years and you know they were at a price limit and then the dad comes in from Florida. He goes, man, what are you doing buying that price range? Look at that $400,000 home. And they're like, what? And, and I mean, to him, it was just cheap. And I mean, he called me up, said, hey, I want to buy down there. And, and you know, I mean, different mindset. And then his daughter looks at me, she goes, now I see why the prices keep going up. I go, yeah, I mean, you, there's a supply and demand, and right now you have no inventory or very little inventory. So people are coming in and buying multiple properties because it's very affordable to them or they cash in on a big property in California or wherever. And, and we're still seeing, I mean, I get multiple buyers all the time, you know, on, on multiple properties, you know. And which market do you typically work in? Man, you know, I'm here in the Galleria area. Uh, we work all over the Houston area. It's very central to us. All my car, uh, clients love it. They come down to us. Um, I've sold as far as Cut and Shoot, Texas. Oh, wow. You know where that's at. I do know where <laughs> Cut and Shoot is, matter of fact. And, you know, it was there. And, I mean, lately I've been getting a lot of requests. I mean, uh, prior to it in my bank industry, I was, I was local. I was in downtown Houston. So all my clients would come into downtown. And then when I left the industry, they all stay with me. And I got very familiar with the markets around the Houston area. Certain markets I won't touch. Uh, I'll refer them over because... I'm not too familiar with it, but I mean, I've been blessed on that's that. That's the side. right thing to yeah, do. It is, you need it to be, is, you need to be, uh, you know, well versed in, in a, an yeah. expert in the area in which you work. Correct. Yeah, one of the advantages I get is, I mean, I'm not real biased towards one area, so people, when they come in from out of state, they're just like, "Hey, I've heard about this area, that area." So you know, break it down for them, give them information, let them decide, and I'll get some people I want to sell their house, and I say, "Well, why'd you buy here?" Well, the agent, you know, pretty much told me about this area and sold me into it. I said, "There's nothing wrong with that." You know, you should have done your homework. You know, and Houston is huge. Like we were talking, there's a lot of little micro centers. You know, you can go around the corner and find something cheaper. You're in a whole different school district, and that's a high driver in pricing. Right, you know, exactly. Mm -hmm. And you're getting there because I think you were working uh, out in Cyprus at one time uh, quite a bit. And you got Klein and, and those school districts got there desirable, and then some people. Uh, and, and HISD is a good school district. It is. It's, it's, uh, you had to kind of do some research on that, but well, there's some great, there's you, some great you know, schools. There's markets like you take Edo, all that side of town. Uh, property values are going up. I had one of my uh, clients down there, you know, a good friend of mine. He's like, hey, man, you know, I want to sell my house. I go, bro, the property is going to go up. Called me the other day. He goes, hey, man, everything's like triple in price. <laughs> and then, you know, he's he's got kids and, you know, he goes, man, there's a lot of good magnet schools out here. And the cool thing about there is that you can choose what school to send your kids. Exactly. You know, so uh, I think that's another reason why a lot of people went out. There was a huge misconception about schools being bad in Houston. I mean, we, we got some top-notch schools throughout the whole Houston area and inside of Houston as well and, you know, private schools as well. Yeah, exactly. Of course, Edo, of course, is uh, those areas east of downtown. It's downtown, so it's correct. It's actually called Edo, so I don't know that everybody out there knows that, but it has gotten to be a very, very hot. And I remember there was an attempt back in the uh, 80s and early 90s to redevelop that area, and it was just too soon. Yeah, yeah, it was. People, you know, those pioneers the ones end up with the arrows in their back, right? It, well, <laughs> exactly. I mean, the thing is, is you got properties out there that were selling for you know, 30, 40,000 on average. I mean, they're up in the 200s. There's one area... Uh, over there by Oceland, you know, and, and we were looking at it and we saw a price increase. Everything's in the 400 plus. And you go back three years, it's, you know, it's 70, 80, 90,000. I mean, the thing is, everybody's coming into Houston. There's a lot of growth going on. You have the Marriott coming up. I mean, uh, Discover Green, all that stuff just attract a lot of people. The convention center, the convention district is going to start bringing in a lot of growth and change. The, the light rail is pushing in people. Uh, education now, U of H. I mean, you see the changes we have going on there. Go Cougs. Exactly, yeah. So <laughs> Champions. Uh, yeah, it's, I mean, you know, uh, everybody's attracted to that market, you know, and, and, and what, what happens is prices start going up. 
you know, because there's very little supply out. I mean, uh, properties out there to be sold. So, you know, supply and demand drives a property. Yeah, well, our inventory is up about 26%, but we're still right around four and a half uh, to five months supply, which is still exactly. kind of leans towards the buyer's market still. Usually when you get to six months, then you're talking about yeah. a balanced market. Well, yeah, and you know what? It, go, it goes back. I mean, uh, it, it depends on the areas as well. You know, I mean, there's some markets, like I said, where they go quick and some that don't. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, how do we get a hold of you? Well, you can call me. Uh, you can call me at my number, 832-545-0236. Uh, I'm available all the time. Feel free to text message me. People tend to do that. I see my millennials text messaging me. Of uh, course. I know. I'm like, I, mean, I don't get a call no more. So it's something, you know, we're seeing a lot. So I'm, I'm very, uh, you know, uh, as far as my number, you can call me, text message me, and, uh, you know, you get a call back. And immediately, unless I'm here on the show or, you know, with a client. <laughs> yeah, we can still text. That's okay. Yeah. So, Rob, put your phone down. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> So we're up against a break, so we will be right Perfect. back. What you want to do, baby? Where you want to go? I'll take you to the moon, baby. 